Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Trump. On this National Day of Prayer, let's take a moment to extend our deepest sympathy to the families of those who have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. Let us pray for the ill, the ones who are suffering, and those serving on the front lines. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide. That we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Thank you very much. Please. Thank you. Be seated, please. And Melania, thank you very much on the second anniversary of the Be Best initiative. You've done a fantastic job, and everybody appreciates it. But I want to thank you. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire nation for all that you do for America's children and on fighting the drug addiction problem that we have in this country. It's all over the world. But I want to thank you very much. Great job you do. You work so hard. On this National Day of Prayer, America is engaged in a fierce battle against a very terrible disease. Throughout our history, in times of challenge, our people have always called upon the gift of faith, the blessing of belief, the power of prayer, and the eternal glory of God. I ask all Americans to join their voices and their hearts in spiritual union as we ask our Lord in Heaven for strength and solace, for courage and comfort, for hope and healing, for recovery, and for renewal. In recent days and weeks, our country has endured a grave hardship. We pray for every family stricken with grief and devastated with a tragic loss. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, and first responders waging war against the invisible enemy. We pray for the scientists and researchers, pioneer treatments, that they find therapies and vaccines, and that they find them soon. We pray for the frontline workers keeping our nation fed, nourished, and safe and secure. May God watch over them all. We are honored to have with us today our amazing Vice President, Mike Pence, and his wonderful wife, Carrot, great friends of our nation and great friends of mine and Melania's. And somebody's done an incredible job, not only as Vice President, but as heading the task force, which has come up with so many solutions and ideas and things that we didn't even think about two months ago. We're also profoundly grateful to be joined by many faith leaders who are helping to care for our neighbors in their hour of need. Thank you all for providing meals to families, medical supplies to hospitals, and for providing spiritual strength and encouragement to your communities. Very important people, very respected people, and very much loved people. In every part of our country, we've seen grace of God through the love and devotion of our fellow citizens. As Scripture assures us, the Lord your God is not your midst, a mighty one who will save. And I think it's, uh, I think it's so true. Think of that. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. We have been reminded once again that God has blessed our land with heroes of faith. 
Here with us is Brittany Atkinsola from Charlotte, North Carolina. Brittany is a nurse, a pastor, a wife, a mother. When she saw the dire situation in New York City, she volunteered to work at Samaritan's Purse Field Hospital in Central Park. There, she worked 13 hours. She to leaders in faith and in public life, to all our distinguished guests, it is an honor for Karen and me to be here with all of you at the White House as we mark one more national day of prayer. You know, for our family, prayer has always been an important part of our lives, just as it has for millions of Americans. Karen and I will both attest that the sweetest words that we ever hear are when people will take a moment, walk up, and say, I'm praying for you. And you know they mean it from their hearts. And we hear it all the time. We can attest firsthand. America is a nation of prayer. The American people have long believed in the power of prayer, that the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much, and that in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, we are to present our request to God with the promise that the peace of God passes all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is the cord that runs through every era of American history as well. In 1775, the Second Continental Congress established a day of fasting and prayer. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln urged Americans to pray so that, in his words, the United cry of the nation would be heard on high and answered with a blessing. And since 1952, every president has issued a proclamation in honor of the National Day of Prayer. And today, President Donald Trump continues that tradition here in the Rose Garden. And as we gather here, I know we all feel that it's especially fitting that we do so this year and during this time. In these times of heartache for tens of thousands of American families and hardship for tens of millions, now more than ever, it's important that we take time to pause and to pray for America. And on behalf of my wife, Karen, and I, let me say how grateful we are that the President and the First Lady have continued this great tradition at such a time as this. Though it is not the first time our President has called on the nation during our present national crisis to pray, it was in March of this year the President asked the American people to join in his words in a day of prayer for all people, all those affected by the coronavirus pandemic, and to pray for God's healing hand to be placed on the people of our nation. And I can tell you that your first family and our family have been inspired every day to see the way that the American people have taken up that call, not just to pray, but to act in the midst of this national crisis. We've seen people of every creed in this country, in every city and every state, step forward to put feet on their faith with countless acts of kindness and generosity to those in need. The Bible says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. And 
and neither have the compassions or the generosity of the American people failed in this hour. So on this national day of prayer, we count it a privilege to simply say to the American people, thank you for your prayers. And thank you for all you have done to see your family, your friends, your neighbors, and even strangers through these unprecedented times. But today, with the deepest respect and a grateful heart, we urge you to be persistent in prayer. On this National Day of Prayer, pray for the families who've lost loved ones, Pray for those who at this very hour are struggling with the severest consequences of the coronavirus. Pray for our doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who have cared for our families as if they were their own and have not just provided the health care that any one of us would want for a loved one but in so many cases, our doctors and nurses and healthcare workers have literally taken the place of family and loved ones for patients enduring the isolation of the coronavirus. Pray for the police, firefighters, and first responders who without regard to their personal safety have rendered care sped those impacted by this dread virus to healing hands. And as we gather today and remember these families and these heroes and all of those who have labored every day to protect our nation during these challenging times, let's also remember to pray for all of the men and women who defend this nation in good times and bad, who wear the uniform of the United States, who are standing a post at this hour in far-flung places around the world, who are deploying as we speak to defend this great nation. Let's remember them as well. And on this National Day of Prayer, as we pray for the American people, for every American of every creed, let's do so with faith in those ancient words that Americans have clung to throughout our history, that if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray, Let's know, let's know that he'll do like he's always done throughout every challenging hour in the history of this nation. He'll hear from heaven, and he'll heal this land. So thank you. God bless you, and God bless America. In my own life, in times of despair and anxiety, I've cherished Psalm 4610, which says, be still and know that he is God. And I've also gotten a lot of comfort from Psalm 628, trust in him at all times. Pour out your heart to him. For God is in the intensive care unit for weeks, praying for each patient while giving them the very best care. As Brittany said, we just keep sharing the love of Christ through our gifts of nursing. 
Brittany, America is forever indebted to you and the incredible job you, do, you have done. And we very much appreciate it, Brittany. Please come up. Please come up, Brittany, and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. President. It has been a great honor and privilege to be able to travel around the world with Samaritan's Purse and help people in their time of crisis and need. And I most recently had the opportunity to go to New York City, as you shared. And I will tell you that um, just to be able to combine both my skills of nursing and, and the gifting of pastoring at such a time as this in our nation and to serve the people of New York City was truly one of the greatest honors of my life. And I know that I am one of many frontline workers that are serving our country right now. And so um, to all of my colleagues at Samaritan's Purse and to everyone that is doing such an incredible job sharing their gifts to help those in need, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for being just a light of hope in a time that is such a hopeless time for so many people. I would love to just leave you with a scripture that has helped me so much through this time. And it's Galatians 6, 9. And what it says is, let us not become weary of doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And the harvest that I'm believing for our country is one of restoration and hope. I am believing for healing in the name of Jesus, and I am believing that unity, that unity would thrive during this time. So thank you so much, and God bless you all. That's great. Wow. Thank you very much. Brittany, no notes, no nothing. You know your stuff, don't you, huh? Thank you very much. Fantastic person. Also with us is Mario Salerno, a landlord, auto shop owner in Brooklyn. Last month, Mario waived rent for all 200 of his tenants. So I got to see you on television, actually. I said, what kind of a landlord is that? That's a great landlord, right? That's very nice. I got to see that. He wanted to make sure that they could put food on the table, and he wanted to take care of their families. Even though he's losing a lot of income, which he could always use, we can always use it, right, Mario? But that was a big thing. Mario says that's irrelevant compared to the value of human life. Fantastic thing, Mario. He also believes he has two callings in his wonderful world, usually wonderful world. We live in a world that's very complex. To do good to people and to keep his faith. As Mario puts it, faith is a lot more powerful than fear. That's true. Mario, if you would, would you please step up and say a few words? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm honored. Uh, on this special day of prayer, I have nothing written. I just want to thank the good Lord. Every morning when I wake up, 3.30 in the morning, get ready, put my feet, I pray. And I ask the good Lord, please, conquer this vicious virus. He's making us all stumble. And besides me praying to the good Lord, I pray for our dear president. And I tell God, please, give him the strength and the power, because he's not only our leader of the great United States. The whole world is following this gentleman. And I can't say anything else, but let's please pray for this wonderful man, faith before fear. And Mr. President, I'm honored to be here, and I pray for you every day. God bless America, and God bless you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you wow. That's so great. Thank you, Mario. That's really nice. I appreciate it. And by the way, I love your tie, but I love your words even more. Thank you very much. In every age and in every generation, the prayers of our people and the faith of our families has willed us on to victory. No obstacle, no enemy, and no danger can overcome the mighty spirit and soul of our nation. In every battle against poverty, against disease, against tyranny and evil, we have placed our loyalty in each other and our trust in God, and we have prevailed. We will continue to prevail. We will prevail again. We will vanquish the virus. We will defeat the enemy. We will not fail. So once more, we call upon our Creator to guide us through these very complex steps, protect our people, rebuild our communities, and restore our beloved nation. 
to even greater heights. We will never forget, however, those that have been lost, those incredible souls, and the families of those souls that are going through so much. We will never forget you. We will be there for you. May God continue to strengthen our hearts and sustain our souls. May God continue to shed His divine grace upon this land. And may God forever bless the United States of America. Now I'd like to ask the faith leaders of our country, some of the most important of our faith leaders, people respected by everybody, to say a few words, please. Sister Anita Martinez, if you would uh, perhaps begin. Sister, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to grant us in this moment to be in your most holy presence, in the presence of our Mother Mary, of Saint Joseph, our protector and guide, of all the angels and of all the saints. I ask you to please grant us the grace to be one in body and in spirit, all of your children of the earth. Please be with us so that with one voice, with the voice of the church, we may pray together to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus, Son of God, you were sent by the Father to bear our weakness. Be with us in this time of crisis. Merciful Savior, heal and comfort the sick so that with health restored, they may give you praise. Divine Physician, accompany our caregivers so that serving you with patience, they may heal wisely. Eternal Wisdom, guide our leaders so that seeking remedies, they may follow your light. Christ, the Anointed, protect us in body and spirit, so that freed from harm, we may be delivered from all affliction. Beloved Son of the Father, grant us the grace to grow in love for him, that we may love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. You who live and reign in the unity of God the Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We thank you, Father, for this moment. We thank you for your love for us. We ask you, in the name of Christ our Lord, to bless us with this most precious blood, to bless our nation, to bless our world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, sister, very much. Thank you. It's beautiful. Pujari Haresh Brambat. Thank you, Mr. President. In these troubled times of COVID-19, social distancing, and the lockdown, it's not unusual for people to feel anxious or not at peace. The Shanti path or the peace prayer is a prayer that does not seek worldly riches, success, fame, nor is it a prayer for any desire for heaven. It is a beautiful Hindu prayer for peace, Shanti. It's a Vedic prayer derived from the Yajur Ved. And the prayer goes, Om Dior Shanti Ranta Riksha Gwam Shanti Pruthavi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Roshadaya Shanti Vanash Pataya Shanti Vishwe Deva Shanti Brahma Sargam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Shama Shanti Om Shanti 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 The prayer translates into Onto the heavens be peace Onto the sky and earth be peace Peace be onto the water Onto the herbs and trees be peace. Onto all the crops be peace. Onto Brahma and onto all be peace. And may we realize that peace. Om, peace, peace, peace. Thank you.
Thank you. Would Bishop Dwight Green please come up? Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to the President, Vice President, and all those that are assembled today at the National Day of Prayer. Let us pray. To the eternal sovereign God of creation, you have summoned your people once again to prayer. And the presiding bishop of the Church of God in Christ and the membership of our organization around the world has for the last 12 weeks been joined together interceding for the deliverance of our nation and our world, that God would deliver us from the coronavirus pandemic and all other debilitating plagues present in our world. We believe that the suffering and the loss of life, which continues to threaten the social, economic, and geopolitical balance of our country, can be curtailed when the people of God pray. You said in Psalms 107, he will send his word to heal and deliver us from destruction. Our systems are broken, no longer trusted, nor effective because we have strayed from your commandments and our people are wounded, ailing, bewildered, frustrated by empty promises. We need you to transform us to the likeness of your son, Jesus the Christ. We need your word of healing that will restore confidence in our justice system, that will reflect fairness and provide rehabilitation for redeemable offenders. We need your word to heal that promise quality early childhood education and equitable distribution of opportunities for wealth building for blacks, browns, and disadvantaged whites. We need your word of healing that will speak to the physical, emotional, and spiritual deficiencies of our nation. Your word that will cause us to recognize we are all God's children and he has called us to love and good works. You declare the house divided against itself will self-destruct. So Father, have mercy on us as we repent today for our miscourage of justice. I repent of all offenses and disobedience of our nation to your commandments and humbly seek your forgiveness and pray for mercy that you would deliver us from this evil affliction of the coronavirus and grant to our president, Mr. Trump, the vice president, Congress, and the religious leaders of our nation, your divine insight to navigate this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior. And we pray divine comfort for the grieving families of those that have been lost and those that are yet struggling with the affliction inflicted by this virus. We pray your comfort, your deliverance, and your peace. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Thank you, Bishop, very much. Thank you. Pastor Paula White, please come up. Thank you, Paula. What an honor to be here with you, President and First Lady, Vice President, Second Lady. It's a beautiful day to lift up our Lord and Savior. He is a certain God in uncertain times, and the Bible says if two or three of us agree as touching anything, it will be done. Job 22, verse 28 says, if you decree a thing and declare a thing, it will be established. So God, we come in agreement with your word and with your name, the name of Jesus. Psalm 40 verse 17 says, you are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O God. I declare no more delays to the deliverance of COVID-19. 
No more delays to healing and a vaccination. No more delays to restoration of this great nation, the United States of America. For Psalm 71, 2 says, In your righteousness, deliver us and rescue us. Incline your ear and save us. Psalm 107 says, You deliver us out of distress and out of destruction. Your word will not return void, according to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So I declare your word. I declare divine intervention and supernatural turnaround. You will restore this land. According to Psalm 118, 25, Save our nation, O Lord, and send prosperity now. For Deuteronomy 28, 8 says, Command your blessing upon this land. You said in Deuteronomy 8, 9, To bring us into a good land without any lack. For your word declares in Psalm 33, 2, Blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. So I declare you right now to be Lord over this nation, over the United States of America, and we receive your blessing over any plague, over any economic distress. You will stay the hand of the enemy according to 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 16. When 70,000 men died by a plague, David cried out as he covered himself in prayer. And the Lord answered and said, It is enough. Stay now thine hand. Lord, let that be the cry today. And let that be your answer. Lord, enough coronavirus. Enough to death. Enough to fear. Enough to poverty. Stay thine your hand. We pray over President Trump and First Lady, Vice President, and Second Lady, and this administration. I declare Psalm 89, verse 21. Let your hand establish President Trump and let your arm strengthen him. I declare Psalm 98, 1, that your right hand and your holy arm will give him victory. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 58, 11 says, guide him continually. And you said in Psalm 78, 72, that you would guide him by the stillness of your hand. You declared in Psalm 43, that send out your light and truth and let him lead his household, his administration in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray for your mercies, for they are new every single day. And every morning your mercies are new. Your steadfast love never ceases. I declare new mercies for hospital workers, new mercies for doctors and nurses, moms and dads, pastors and clergies, CEOs and employers, for the president, vice president. God, your love is steadfast and it endures forever. So right now, wrap your arms of love around every person who is hurting, every person who is confused, scared, tired, weary, sick, lonely. Let them know your love. Let them know that you will never leave them and you will never forsake them. And in conclusion, I declare Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. I ask the Lord to do a new thing in our nation by giving waters in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Malachi 4.2 says, Jesus, arise over the nation with healing in your wings. President, one last word. Like David, who had had victory after victory after victory after victory, would face his biggest battle. It was called Ziglag. And they would take his wives and his children and the city would be burned down. And he cried and he wept. And he began to pray out to God and God gave him a word. And through fasting and praying, I believe this is the word for you and for this nation. The Lord spoke to him and said, pursue and go after them and you shall without fail recover all. Sir, the word of the Lord, I believe for this nation and for this administration is you will recover all. Incredible, Paula. Thank you. Next is Chaplain Ibrahim Rahim. Thank you, Chaplain. Let's pray. Gracious and merciful Lord, I pray for our nation. I bring the needs of our citizens before you and ask that you be with all of us through the challenges we endure from COVID-19. I pray for the victims and families of victims that have lost their lives as well as those that are fighting for their lives today. I pray for the many without jobs, food, and shelter. I ask that you would give all of our nation's leaders 
the wisdom and courage to lead us through this pandemic. I pray for our president, vice president, first lady, and second lady. I ask that you help us to work together as a nation. I ask that you bless our Congress and all of those in leadership positions to restore our nation back to full operation. I pray for your protection to cover all of our valiant healthcare workers, our courageous first responders, law enforcement, community, and brave men and women of our military. I pray for all essential workers. I pray for the soundness of mind for our governors and judges across the land. I pray for every faith community and their leaders. And I ask your blessings upon those in my community who are observing the collective fast of Ramadan. I ask these blessings in your gracious and merciful name. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sister Debbie Harrison. Sister Harrison, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful this day to be gathered together with representatives from many faiths, united in prayer to appeal to thee thy mercy and grace in helping us and our nation. We are grateful to be in a country where we have the right to exercise our religious beliefs. And we pray and cherish that those freedoms that we have will be protected and not be diminished. We are united in prayer today to ask a special blessing of deliverance, deliverance from this pandemic that has covered the earth in a devastating sickness. We ask that our doctors, nurses, and caregivers can be blessed with special protection and recognition of their sacrifices and hard work. Please bless our scientists and doctors to develop effective treatments for those who are sick and who may become sick. We pray that a safe and effective vaccine can be developed quickly to protect us so that life can return to normal. Bless the leaders of this great nation to be inspired by the to have wisdom and judgment to make good decisions and to get the economy running again. Amplify their talents. Bless our leaders to work together in harmony and unity to do what is best for the citizens of this nation. We pray for those that mourn for lost loved ones and ask thee to send thy Holy Spirit to comfort them and give them assurance that they can be reunited again through the power of our Savior Jesus Christ's resurrection. We know that without thy strengthening help, we will fail. But with thy help and tender mercies, we can do all things and we will not fail. We pray we can look to thee in every thought, doubt not and fear not. We love thee, Heavenly Father, and we call down the powers of heaven to help us, unite us, and deliver us from these troubled times. I say these things in deep gratitude for all of our blessings in the sacred name of Jesus Christ, our healer and redeemer. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Rabbi Ariel Sadwin. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Mr. President. King Solomon, in his great wisdom, writes in the second chapter of Song of Songs, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. The Midrash commentary explains this to be referring to Almighty God at a time when his presence is not visible, nor is it readily apparent. But fear not, says King Solomon, he is right there in the background, watching you through the window and the lattice. Avinu ha'av harachamon, O our merciful Father, this idea is so apparent and reminiscent to this most challenging time during which we find ourselves. Our relationship with you seems so different from what it always has been. We have not been in your house, our holy synagogues, in nearly two months. These sacred places where we go to seek you and to derive inspiration three times a day, every day, are empty, dark, and shuttered. Instead, all we have had is the sanctuary of our own homes and the limited allowable interactions. There is fear, there is sickness, there is death. 
wherever we turn and whenever we listen. But yet we know you are still there, watching over us as always. Ribono Shalola, master of the world, you are the Rofei Chal Basar, the healer of all flesh. We implore you to eradicate this awful plague from your earth. Heal those who suffer, comfort those who mourn, sustain those who have lost livelihood. Please bless our president, our first lady, our vice president, our second lady, and the entire administration, as well as the leaders of state and local governments who must make critical decisions each and every day. Please bless the doctors, nurses, first responders, and all medical personnel who dedicate their lives to save others. Please bless the selfless community and civic leaders who are doing their part to help those in need. And please bless each and every one of your 330 million children who make up the United States of America. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi, very much. Now I'd like to ask the Spirit of Faith Christian Center Choir to come up and conclude the event by leading us in the singing of God Bless America. Thank you. It is my prayer and desire as we join together to sing God Bless America that we would all reciprocate and begin to bless God. Thank you very much. That was, that was great. Thank you. You know, while you're up here, so this is totally unexpected, but you're so good. Do you have one song that you'd like to sing for the group and for the whole world that's watching right now? You have a lot of cameras out there. Go ahead. We'll put a little pressure on you. You can handle it. Go ahead.
That's fantastic. A lot of people were watching. Thank you. Great talent. Beautiful. Uh, thank you all very much. Great day of prayer. Thank you very much, Mike.